guys, Ron here, and some Pokemon look weird. They've always had a reason for looking the way they do, but some of the artistic interpretations leave us baffled, so much so that, to some fans, a few Pokemon don't look like what they're supposed to represent. For example, a lot of people take issue with how my favorite water type, Samurott, doesn't look like an otter because its snout is too long. Flattening that nose would make him look more like a normal otter. You guys happy now? So what if we took a group of Pokemon that deviate from our preconceived ideas of what the animals they're based on should look like and make them look more normal? And to be clear, when I say normal, I'm not talking about taking a score bunny and drawing it so it literally looks like an anatomically correct rabbit. I'm just gonna take these Pokemon and slightly change their features without making them look like an entirely different Pokemon. Their concept will still be completely intact. A Snorlax is still gonna be a Snorlax, but let's begin with Blaziken! So I'm looking at an unaltered Blaziken right now, and I'm, I'm staring at it, I'm dissecting his groin feathers, he's feeling very uncomfortable, I'm just, I'm, enjo I'm enjoying the view, as, as one does, but tons of people think this guy looks more human than chicken. Now I think that stems from two things, its arms, and lack of clear beak. So we have some objectives, let's make it look more like a Shamo chicken, the, the fighting roosters that Blaziken is based on. Now for all of these, I'm going to be tracing over the original art, because I want to have a true and accurate before and after comparison, so all the unchanged parts need to be exactly the same as they were in the original. Since giving Blaziken a defined beak is what's most important to me actually, we're going to start with that. That instantly makes him more chicken-like. As a kid, I actually didn't fully put together the fact that he was a chicken. I didn't pick Torchic, so I didn't know that that's what it became the first time I saw it. Now, Mega Blaziken has a head crest or chicken comb on its head, and I feel like Blaziken should have one too. Instead of two antenna looking protrusions. I also gave him a waddle on its neck. You know what a waddle is, right? But of course, they're both spiky, because it's still a Blaziken. Its chest is still feathers, but now instead of an arm, this boy's got a nice juicy wing. I mean, considering Blaziken uses its legs way more than its hands, it would make more sense to give this bird a wing. It just feels right to give birds wings, you know, instead of arms. But now I'm going back to that comb, trying to make it more interesting and more like a head crest. This is what I decided on, but I'm gonna change it later. Now it's time for the body. Shamos are still upright and have tons of feathers that ruffle on the bottom, so giving him some more feathers around his waist and leaving the feathers around his legs makes sense. It would also look terrible if we removed Blaziken's leg feathers and revealed his skinny chicken legs. It's what makes Blaziken Blaziken, so the legs stay. But let's make those wings bigger and more angular. It was too soft looking for a fighting type. Just adding some visible leg spikes. It's a cockfighter after all. Now I'm experimenting with some spots that were appropriate since fighting chickens have them, and a fire type with sunspots wouldn't be a bad idea. But in the final design, I perfected the head crest or comb and took out those sunspots. I don't know how a big Blaziken fan would feel about this, but I love it. It was successful in my opinion. Shamos have tons of different colored feathers on them, so it would make sense for Blaziken to have some brown and even a bit of blue on them. Now I'm not asking you to like this version more than the original, cause Blaziken's a cool dude, but I hope this one does make him look more like a chicken, and therefore more... normal. Whatever that means. Zangoose! Now recently I've noticed how even huge Pokemon fans don't really know what Zangoose is, and I know that its design doesn't really help. Its relationship with Seviper is what reveals this Pokemon's origin. It's a mongoose, it's in the name even. But the rivalry between the snake and mongoose is older than I. But considering Zangoose looks more like a grumpy cat than a mongoose, I think some fans desire a small design change, so let's begin. This is the Pokemon that inspired this video, so I'm a little nervous. The number one and two changes that must be done are the shortening of its ears and the elongating of its snout. We're gonna keep the scars and scruffy fur, cause that's what the Z-goose is all about. I wanted to blacken the rim of its eyes, like a mongoose, and I also decided to shorten the claws to make it more normal. I also wanted to make the body slimmer, but I don't think its mouth is all that different yet, so I made its snout longer and gave it more of an animalistic mouth. The cheeks are also what make a mongoose look mongoosey. The legs are basically the same. I didn't want to make his body too slim, cause that would ruin Zangoose's aesthetic. I ultimately decided to make its legs longer and feet hairless to match its front claws. And I adjusted the snout again and added a new pattern on its nose. In the final design, I brought back Zangoose's plump tummy because it made no sense for the head to be that big without a strong lower body to support it. This is my normal version of Zangoose. I don't think it's better or anything. Zangoose is my favorite normal type, so I already love him. I just wanted people to know that it wasn't a cat. Poliwhirl. Poliwhirl is a Pokemon whose origin and concept weren't fully revealed to me as a child. Only when I was older did I come to understand that it was based on the glass frogs and transparent tadpoles whose swirling intestines were visible. But Tajiri's favorite Pokemon still doesn't look like its origin. Instead of actually seeing its intestines, Poliwhirl just has a hypnotic pattern, and its spherical shape 
gloves and stubby legs don't help either. It's a great Pokemon, but let's make it normal! The bulbous eyes are fine, so they'll stay, but let's make the pupils more tree frog-like, even though it's not one, but it's more expressive than those sideways frog pupils. Now it's very important to me that this mouth is noticeable, so he actually has an upper lip. I know I don't want him to be round, I want him to be frog-shaped. What I did here wasn't that good, but it did showcase how I wanted the stomach to be like a window into the swirl inside its body instead of having a swirl pattern on its stomach. But how about we give him a lower lip and jaw shape so we finally understand how its face works. Also let's make him smile. Now he's friendlier. Also its arms are gonna have pads at the end like Greninja and he won't have those gloves cause that ain't normal. Taking him out also makes his arms look longer even though they are exactly the same length as before but the legs are definitely gonna be longer. Let's make him look like he's jumping. He kinda looks like Mario, like, like a video game protagonist. If it looked like this, I'd understand why they would slap him on all the Pokemon merchandise like they did. Of course, his legs are more frog-like, but now that I removed its jaw, it looks like he has a huge open mouth. But if we add the intestines, it'll fix that problem a bit. But it will make more sense in color. Here's the final design! I decided to give it some bubble patterns on its back and made the swirl pink, cause again, these are its actual intestines. I love them! I even showed him to the biggest Poliwhirl fan I know, and I can officially say that this version is Ace Trainer Liam approved, so I'd say it's a success. Sneasel! To many people, Sneasel doesn't really look like a weasel. Now it's based on the Kameitachi, mythical weasels with scythes, so I don't want to remove Sneasel's sharp claws, but then what makes it look more like a weasel? Should I just shorten that long ear? We'll see. I mean, I'm gonna start by making that nose cuter, but honestly, it already kinda looks like a weasel nose. I'm gonna leave the big eyes, cause it's a fictional creature, it doesn't need tiny eyes. But now let's give Sneasel the ears of a weasel. We'll still make the ear a bit longer, but that's it really. I made the neck slightly longer and left the arms as is, but honestly it simply looks like a Sneasel with a shorter ear. Not much of a difference except for a weasel tail. I had- I have nothing. It wasn't much of a difference to warrant any line art, so I guess Sneasel was more normal than I thought. I wasn't gonna make the head more proportionate to that of an actual weasel cause I still wanna make it look like a Pokemon, and mammal Pokemon have big heads. Let's try a Pokemon that isn't a mammal. Scrafty! I wanted to try my hand at redesigning Scrafty cause not a lot of people get the whole idea that this guy's a lizard and that his clothes are just his shedded skin. It's very unique, but I think his round head and flat lizard spikes make him look less lizardy than he can. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give him an actual eyebrow for his eyes and make a more complicated mouth. Instead of a flat crest, we're gonna make it look like those spiky mohawks that punks have. On his cheeks, I'm gonna give this guy some tympanum. You know, those eardrum things that animals like iguanas have. That's honestly where I got those spiky spikes from, so let's just make Scrafty as iguana as can be. Now his face isn't just round, it's clearly the shape of a lizard. There's no denying it anymore. But you'll see that I'm gonna adjust his crest spikes a bunch of times just so the angle is right. Now so that his head crest and stomach patterns match, I'm gonna make the stomach pattern spiky too, instead of lines like in the original. The clothes are gonna be literally the same except for the spike at the end of its tail which I'll change later. But now I decided to redesign the cheeks, make them more streamlined. I made his nose lizardy, and then I added a lower eyelid. Now this is what I call a hoodlum lizard. In the final design, I simply fixed the stomach pattern. Again, I like it. You'd think that a normal version of a Pokemon would be simpler, but in this case it was the opposite. By making him look more like a normal lizard, he got more depth. Scyther! To me, Scyther's face doesn't look like a bug's. It's very dragon-y, and its beta design kinda indicates that it was supposed to be full on bug dragon or whatever, so I decided to redesign my favorite bug type by giving him antennas and bug eyes, but other than that and adding an extra pair of limbs and getting rid of the claws on its legs, it's basically still a Scyther, so I didn't want to waste time drawing line art. The point comes across without it, so I just filled the green parts so it's more clear. If you guys like it enough, maybe I'll redraw it with detailed art and show you it in part 2. Snorlax! Snorlax is another ambiguous Pokemon. It's not necessarily an actual literal bear, but it hibernates like one and if it was classified as a mammal in the real world, the closest relative it would have would be the bear. Let's make him a full on bear. Again, it's still gonna be a Snorlax. It's fat, it sleeps, it shoots hyper beams out of its eyes, but let's start by making its ears rounder. I don't want to make him totally round like a teddy bear, just nice and soft. We'll finally give it a nose and a philtrum, you know, that the indented line under the nose. And its head pattern will be the same, cause some bears have different colored fur on the face too. Giving him some loose forehead skin makes it look more bear like, and of course actual ear holes. And the body is basically the same, just way furrier. That'll sell it, cause I feel like there are some people who think Snorlax is completely smooth, when in reality it's furry. I made his lower lip blacker like a polar bear's lips, and the final design gave it stomach patterns the same design as the face. It felt right, and to me, it made it look more bear-like. 
Again, Snorlax is a beloved Pokemon, and its design isn't actually flawed, but I do wonder if this one has some merit. There are more Pokemon that can be redesigned to look more normal, enough to make a second episode, so if you enjoyed, leave a like so I know to make part 2, subscribe if you want to see more, and press the bell to get notified if part 2 comes out. Check the description for the t-shirts I made for you guys and the link to my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. Same goes for anybody who clicks the join button too. Follow me on Twitter and I'll see you guys very soon.